Okay, uh, the next area that I want to go over is on page 406 of your curriculum readings. It's addressing LOS 41, actually 41L, which is asking you to uh, describe how a delta hedge is executed. Okay, so they're talking about delta hedging or dynamic hedging here. Dynamic hedging, delta hedging is used interchangeably. Now the interesting about options is, when you buy an option or you sell an option, what do you think more people want to do, buy an option or sell an option? Well, you tend to have sort of an imbalance, if you will, between buyers of options and sellers of options. Why? Because when you buy an option, it has sort of an appeal. All you do is you pay this little amount of money called the premium, and you have what? Especially with a call option, you have potential unlimited price appreciation potential. So the option buyer basically has the potential for a payoff that far exceeds the initial investment that they make, which is the premium. So this a lot of times will lead to an imbalance in the marketplace between the demand to buy options and if you will, the sellers of options. But what do you have? You have basically dealers out there that have to provide liquidity to the market. So since there's more people, more investors that are looking to buy options like buy a put or buy a call, but let's focus on buying a call. Then you have the dealers that have to take the opposite position, which we that the dealer many times will have to sell. So dealers will have to provide liquidity by being willing to buy or sell the options, meaning taking the, op the opposite position. But since there tends to be more a trend more toward buyers of options, the dealer many times will play the seller of the option role. And as compensation for either bid or selling, bid, excuse me, as compensation for either buying or selling options, they're gonna earn what is called a bid ask spread. Now, delta hedging, we're looking at this from the dealer's perspective. The delta hedging allows the dealer to hedge the downside risk that they would have with writing a call option, writing a naked call option or a short option position, like writing a call. Why? What is the potential loss on writing a call? Well, if the stock price goes up forever, they could have an unlimited loss because the buyer of the call has an unlimited gain. The writer of the call would have an unlimited loss. So delta hedging actually allows the dealer to hedge the downside risk of these short option positions. So if the dealer were actually then to end up with a long position, like if they actually went out and bought the stock, if the dealer has a long position in the underlying asset, meaning the stock, that would produce what? An offsetting gain to hedge the short call option that they have. So if I were a dealer and I had a naked call option, I wrote a naked call option, okay, and I'm concerned about an unlimited uh, loss if the stock price should go up, I would wanna hedge myself by having a long position in the underlying stock, and then I would have what's called a hedged position. On the other hand, if the dealer has a short position in the underlying, meaning that will produce a gain for them to hedge their short put position. So if I'm a dealer and I have a short posi put position, meaning that I wrote a put, what am I concerned about? I'm concerned about having to make a payment if the stock price goes down. So if the stock price goes down, I wanna make money, so I would short the stock. So if the dealer has a short position in the underlying, meaning the stock, that would produce an offsetting gain to hedge their short put position. And therefore the price moves of the underlying and the uh, option are not one for one. We talked about that before, like the delta of a call option. Only if the, op only if the stock is way up there will the delta of the call option be one, and only if the way stock is down all the way down there will the delta of the put option be negative one. But in general, the price moves of the option and the underlying are not gonna be one for one. So the delta of the call option or delta of put option will be somewhere between zero and one or zero and negative one. So delta actually determines the ratio of that move and that's why we call it the hedge ratio. And although your readings and the prep providers provide you with a formula there, I want to rearrange that formula. And if you look at your screen right now, I've actually written the formula as the delta, as, as we said before, the delta is the change in the price of the underlying option divided by the change in the price of the underlying asset. We've done this before. That is the same formula that we talked about before. We're gonna take this one step at a time. So that's the delta of an option. And as I said before, and I'll repeat it again, the delta of a call option from the buyer's perspective will be between zero and positive one. The delta of the call option from the short position will be between zero and negative one. The delta of a put from the buyer's position will be between zero and negative one, but the delta of the put from the writer's position of the put will be between zero and positive one. And again, at the money, options will always be 0.5.
Now, let's take a look at this from the perspective here. Let's say, and this is the formula that on the next screen, I'm, I'm showing you this formula right now and I'm gonna explain it. If you wanna come up with the hedged position in stock that you need, and this is a reworking of the formula that you have in your prep providers materials or in the curriculum books. If you wanna come up with the hedged position in the stock, in other words, how many shares of stock are you gonna to need to buy or sell, you would take the negative, and I would say negative, and then I would put parentheses, negative, and then the parentheses. Don't put the negative in the parentheses. Negative outside the parentheses, and inside the parentheses, call it the delta. So negative parentheses delta times the number of options. That would tell you the amount of stock that you need to buy or sell in order to have a delta neutral hedged position. So let's see how this formula works out because I want to make sure that no matter what they do on the exam, you get the right numbers and you know whether you're buying shares or selling shares. Let's say you are a dealer, scenario number one, we're gonna say, let's say you're a dealer and you shorted calls on a thousand shares of IBM and the delta of the call option is 0.5, okay? So the delta is 0.5, meaning they are at the money. So you're a dealer, you shorted calls, so you have a short position, you have a liability on 1,000 shares of IBM and the call delta is 0.5. So what are you afraid is going to happen? You're afraid that since you wrote a call option that the stock price will go up and you'll have what? An unlimited loss potential. So what would you want to do? You'd probably want to buy the stock. But if you're gonna buy the stock to create this delta neutral hedge portfolio, how many shares do you need to buy? That's the question of the day. The dealer would obviously lose, if they didn't buy the stock, the dealer would lose approximately $500 if the stock price went up by one buck. Why is that? Because you got a, it's based on a thousand shares and a thousand shares times a delta of 0.5 would give you a loss of $500. So if this dealer just maintained the uh, position of uh, writing a call option on a thousand shares of IBM stock and uh, IBM stock went up by a buck, they would have an additional liability of 500 bucks. What could the dealer do in order to protect their position? If the dealer actually owned 500 shares of stock, then the dealer would be hedged. Why? Because they would have a, for a $1 increase in the price of the stock, they would have $500 gain on the stock that they own now, but a $500 loss on the call options that they wrote. We just calculated that. So that would net out to zero. So now to see how this would work out in the formula, we would say, okay, we're going to figure out how many shares of stock do they need and whether they need to buy or sell. So we're gonna say, okay, the number of shares of stock would be negative, and then in parentheses, we would put the delta of the, of the delta of the call. Now, since the delta of the call is 0 0.5, is it a positive 0 0.5 or a negative 0 0.5? It would be a negative 0 0.5 in the parentheses. Why? Because you, the dealer, wrote the call option. The buyer of the call option, the delta is between zero and positive one. For you, it's between zero and negative one as the writer of the call. So it'd be negative 0.5. So negative, and then in parentheses, a negative 0.5 times, if you will, the uh, number of options, which was 1,000. We're gonna assume one option per one share. So 1,000 op uh, options. So therefore, you would have to buy 500 shares. Negative, a ne negative times a negative makes it a positive. So negative, negative 0.5 times 1,000 would give you, you have to buy 500 shares. If you're not sure yet, let's take a look at another scenario. Let's say the dealer, this is scenario number two, also uh, uh, writes put options or shorts puts on 10,000 shares of GE, General Electric stock, and the put delta is 0.6. So now, since we are writing puts and the delta of the put is 0.6, from the buyer's perspective, the buyer of the put is between zero and negative one. For us, it's between zero and positive one. For the dealer, it's between zero and positive one. Between zero and positive one, so the delta will be a positive 0.6 because he wrote the put options, okay? The dealer would lose approximately $6,000 if the stock price decreases by a buck. How did we get that? Well, what's the delta of the option? 0.6, and then how many shares? 10,000, so 10,000 times 0.6, if the stock price decreases, who makes money when the stock price decreases? The buyer of the put or the writer of the put? The buyer of the put. So the buyer of the put would make uh, $6,000, so the dealer in this case who wrote the put would lose $6,000. Again, that would be the 10,000 
shares times 0.6, so that would be a loss of $6,000 if the stock price decreased by a buck, because the buyer of the put would make the $6,000 and the dealer would lose the $6,000. So what would the dealer want to do if he wants to have a delta neutral hedge position? If the dealer actually shorted, we'll see how we come out with 6,000 shares, but if they actually shorted 6,000 shares, the dealer would be completely hedged, as the 6,000... Uh, the $6,000 short position produces a gain of $6,000 for a $1 decrease in the stock price. So I'll say that again. So if the dealer shorted 6,000 shares, the dealer would be hedged. Why? Because they would have 6,000 short position producing a gain of $6,000 for a $1 decrease in the stock price. That makes sense. The writer of the put is expecting the stock price to go up. If the stock price goes down, they lose money. The buyer of the put makes money. So the writer of the put would want to, if, what would the writer want to do? He wrote a put option on the stock. He would actually want to short the stock. He would want to short, take a short position in the stock so that when the stock price goes down, he makes money on the stock and the money that he makes on the stock offsets the loss on the writing of the put. So then how many shares of stock would he actually have to how many shares of stock would you have to short or sell? Well, we again, how do we figure it out? The number of shares that you have to buy or sell is negative, and then in parentheses, the delta. So negative, what's going to be the delta for the put option? It's going to be a positive 0.6 because he wrote the put option. And from the writer's perspective, a put is going to be between zero and positive one. So it's going to be a positive 0.6 times the 10,000 options because we're assuming 10,000 shares, 10,000 options. So therefore, he would have to negative and in parentheses, a positive 0.6, and so that makes it a negative 0.6. Negative 0.6 times 10,000 would give you negative 6,000. So you would have to short or sell 6,000 shares. So what I'm doing right now is, I know I've done this all verbally. I'm actually going to write out this entire problem for you so that you have it. Don't stress out. I want it. I like to explain things first, and then if you want it as backup, then I give you backup the problem with the answers. But I don't want you to just always look at a problem while I'm talking to you and you're not understanding it. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a screen that shows you the actual two scenarios that I gave you and the calculations of how I came up with um, buying 500 shares in the first scenario and shorting 6,000 shares or selling 6,000 shares in the uh, second scenario.